The late Richard Schmidt once said, in a sense, every work you do is a self-portrait because your paintings always reveal more about you than about your subject. Your experience of something, not the something itself, is the true underlying subject of every work we do. The brushes we use in Painter become a part of who we are as digital painters, and our brush marks are no exception. In this tutorial, I would like to take you on a journey in landscape painting. I will explain to you how the new Painter 2022 stamps residing in the Capture Dab libraries can create traditional marks that will enchant you and add richness to your work unlike anything before. So gather up your favorite brush and let's get started. Hi, I'm Karen Boniker and I'm Elite Painter Master and Founder of Digital Art Academy and I love painting landscapes with Corel Painter. Painter 2022 has a new feature called the Capture Dab Libraries. Essentially, this is a panel that stores your most precious brush dabs and allows you to use them along with your favorite brushes, creating a new and exciting way to paint. When I paint a landscape that I know will take time to complete, I want to make sure that I have done some essential organizing before I begin, and that includes the brushes I will use, and I think about everything from adding color to blending. So you can see an example of my custom palette here where I have several different options that I know I'll be using as I complete this painting. I have my favorite brushes, the navigator, I have the flip horizontal option, I have the size option which is now a new feature in Painter 2022 that can be accessed from the property bar and selecting the size library. You can then just simply hold down the shift key and drag those sizes onto your custom palette. So it makes it easy for you to access different size brushes, speeds up your brush, your painting process pretty nicely, and I'm really enjoying this feature. But the most important thing is my brushes and the marks that I want to make. I will often begin with my favorite brush using the captured dab panel, select other brush dabs that add something unique to the stroke. I think you will spend most of your time doing this. Experimenting is endless and you can capture dabs, save them and more. So I'm going to start off by giving you an example of a particular dab library that I have created with several of my favorite cloud brushes in them. But what you're going to see is what happens to this brush when we use the Capture Dab Library to change the dab. Now, it's a good idea to have your advanced brush controls open because this gives you a nice um, general view of the dab when you select it and how it's changed. So when this brush is set to default, and I'm going to reset it, you'll notice this is the default dab for this particular brush, okay? Now, if I want to change that dab, I'm going to go over to the dab library that I want to work with and select one of the dabs. Notice immediately that dab preview changes and I have the opportunity now to change the size and do so many different things with this uh, particular brush. I can change to a different dab, try a few brush strokes and see how I like it. And I certainly can work with the size options, directions, uh, reset, bleed of the brush. Anything I can do with a default brush, I can do with a new capture dab as well. So again, this gives you so much opportunity to play. 
and have fun and create new brushes as you work through this wonderful new Painter 2022 Capture Dab Library option. At the very top of the library, you're going to find the default brushes. And as you add new dab libraries, which I'm sure you're going to, they will be at the bottom of the hierarchy. So I'm going to go back and reset my brush to default. I'm going to close this now. And we're going to bring up the painting we're going to be working on today. I'll keep my dab preview open. I'm going to start with a new layer here directly above my base layer. And what I did here was start off with a basic sketch, which I always do. Um, I do not include a lot of information, but I use the information that I do include is very basic, which helps me to build my underpainting and get it established. And you can see that's what I've done here. The tone that I'm using is, um, is what I call my ground. And I tend to start with a color other than white. And it's a good idea to start with a color other than white because white is such a bright color, it can alter the perception of the colors you apply to your canvas. And it will make the colors seem duller than they actually are. When you think about the general atmosphere of the painting you are starting and the story you want to tell, the color becomes essential. The new color helps you to judge your paint colors and tones much better. And it will also add an extra dimension to your work and gives it a professional feel. Using complementary color to the primary color you intend is a good start. So in this case, I may work with tones of blue, gray, and violet. So I know that I want to start off with my basic brush called Brushy. I've reset it to default, but I do know that I want to start developing uh, the sky. So I'm going to begin by going down to some of my favorite brushes that are brush dabs that I've created that are in the shape of clouds. And I'm going to simply begin with uh, this one here. And I'm going to take a look at it. And I am going to start building up some texture within the sky. And you can see that um, it's very subtle. I'm not working with a, a big reset here, a heavy reset, but I am starting to develop a little bit of texture within the sky, and I oftentimes will just use my Alt key to sample some of the colors that I see. I want a basic simple sky. I'm not looking for anything really strong here because my real focal area is going to be down towards the bottom where I'm going to have most of the contrast coming in here. When you want to open your Capture Dab library, you'll go to the window menu and come down to Brush Controls, go to Brush Shape, and choose Captured, and that will open up the Capture Dab library. Again, I suggest adding it to your custom palette when you get started because it's easily accessible for you and you don't have to keep going up to the menu all the time to access it. Now this brush is nice because with, um, I'm going to get a little darker color here, with firm pressure I get lots of color, which I just love, and with soft pressure I can just blend and I'm just working through some of my colors here just to get a nice, simple sky to begin with. And I think that's about right. In terms of my brushes, um, I like to remember to reset the brush to default. If I like this brush and I think I'm going to be using it again, by all means, save that brush. And when you save it, let's go ahead and go back to that Capture Dab. 
Remember that it will save the brush with all the attributes of brushy, but it will change the brush dab. So when you save this brush with a new name, be sure you do that. Um, it will save the brush with a new dab, and that is where you're just going to have so much fun. So I'll reset it back to default right now, and I'm going to move over to another one of my favorite brushes called Just Juicy. And again, in its default state, I love this brush for creating texture, for getting in a lot of my basic brush work, and uh, really exaggerating some of the edges. It's beautiful for, uh, one of my favorites for creating texture as well. If I decide to change the brush dab at any point, I can start looking through here and maybe going through some of my favorites or even going up to, let's go up to some of the default bristle brushes here, which might have a real nice impact on uh, my painting. And you can see um, that it does. You know, it has a real nice brush dab effect here. I'm getting a lot of what I would be looking for in these brushes. And I'm just going to kind of start playing with putting in these cliffs and working through some of the textural effects that I would like to add. And it doesn't matter what size you work with here. It's all a matter of finding what what you want, what you're looking for. And oftentimes the paper and the brush dab itself is just going to enhance your work beautifully. So now I might move into uh, maybe developing some of these cypress trees along the beach. And again, I would be looking for a brush that's going to evoke that beautiful effect that the cypress tree gives. And this dab here called Feathered appears to be a nice brush along with my Just Juicy or um, with the Messy Oil or the Brushy uh, in the Bravara brush category as well. Works very nicely. Okay, so you can see how this really adds um, a beautiful effect and I can start developing these um, cypress trees along the cliff line here. They rather go back deep in the reference photo. And I can start adding a few lighter colors up here too. But you can see how that particular brush is working quite well for giving me the effect I am after here for the cypress trees. A lot of motion in this brush, a lot of direction, and I'm really having fun, fun with it. So my light source, I believe, I'm gonna keep it coming from the upper right-hand corner and I'm just going to continue kind of adding these really nice cypress trees in here. I'm going to change brush size now and again. Again, I like to work pretty quick and pretty loose and expressive, so I'm really concentrating more on shape right now and getting some of those brush uh, some of the look of those cypress in according to just their the way they move and how expressive they are. So the color that I chose would have been basically the complementary color and I felt this would work really well going forward. This is a very dark area down here where less light is going to be penetrating. And, you know, uh, feel free to experiment with these uh, beautiful brushes. 
This one here, called the Impressionist, is a beautiful brush, again, for enhancing those trees. So you may have some really happy surprises along the way where uh, you just find a brush that just is perfect for what you're, uh, you know, you're trying to create, the effect you're trying to create. This happens to be one of those brushes. It just happens to create the shapes and very abstract look that you might be after, uh, especially working with the beautiful cypress tree. You can see how just real quick little strokes with this brush uh, really bring it together and help to create that beautiful effect of cypress. The cypress really encompassed a lot of this, the side of this hill, so, or this cliff, so I have to be careful to make sure that I interpret it the way I feel it will read well. And maybe that's about as far as I go with that one. And with a smaller brush size, I'm sticking with the same brush here, but I'm going to go with some lighter colors to start bringing in the look of those cypress trees along the cliff and the trunks that come out from them. Very expressive, very loose, and they're beautiful colors. As they move away from the light, of course, they're going to become a little bit darker. If you hold your shift key down, you can get some straight lines, which may be appropriate in certain parts of the painting where you're trying to get a little more control back. And down towards the bottom here where the cypress trunks just are so beautiful. And how they work into the side of the cliff here is important as well. You can always go back in with a different brush, different dab. Now, I'll make this brush a little larger and I would probably go back over some of these areas just to show some overlapping branches in certain parts. I don't like it to look too straight up there. So something very simple and pretty, appealing, very loose. Now I'm going to move over to a brush called Pastel Blender. And again, I'm going to be using that I'm going to actually add a new layer here and do a little bit of uh, painting on this layer here with, um, we're going to change our paper texture. We're just going to go, <clears throat> we'll just use the basic paper here. And um, my brush dab is reset, so I'm at default. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hold down my shift key and just drag onto the beach here a little bit darker color that's picking up some reflection. Might even go a little darker from the beautiful cypress trees along the cliff. And then when I like what I have, I'm going to go back over those areas just to blend them a little bit. And I might move over to my rag blender as well. I'll set that to default. And I'm going to just soften the edges as I move over. 
remember to calibrate your brushes if you feel you're not getting the exact effect that you would like. I'll move over to 2 inch landscape and we'll reset that brush and again we're going to pick up some darker values and lay those in. This is one of my absolute favorite brushes. Use this all the time and we're using it just with a basic default stamp here. And a few color variations. And what I'm doing now is just making sure I get in some of the little elements that I'm looking for. Now, here's a good opportunity as I'm painting to think about texture. You know, I want to maybe get some more texture in those cliffs. I might want to get some texture in these rocks. So I start not only thinking about paper texture, but how about a brush dab? You know, what can a brush dab do to that particular um, rock area or cliff area that's going to give it texture? And here, under the graphic category, I pick out this one called Speckle. You can see that this brush has some really interesting texture uh, right built right directly into the brush. So when I just use the brush and kind of dab it, you can see that I'm replicating that, that dab that you see there. When I pick up color and start to actually pull in some of that texture, you can see this is where you can just have so much fun. Um, you know, what if I just wanted to add the look of maybe some little rocks down here on the beach and uh, maybe some different value here just to give a little texture into those rocks. And then I pick up, um, for example, let's go back to the rag blender and use that. We'll make sure that brushes again at reset at default and we'll just go ahead and use that as kind of a blending brush to soften some of those edges out and you'll notice that we're not taking out all that texture but some of it and we're able to use it to just soften edges that we might want to soften. I think down here a little bit I might want to play with that and holding down the shift key again will give you that ability to do that and get all kinds of different textures based upon the brushes that you're choosing. So if I go back to, say for example, my Just Juicy brush and I reset it to default, I again can go in here and start thinking about some of the different dabs and texture that I might want to apply uh, in certain areas. So you can see now that I'm using that particular brush to add some texture. Maybe I want to add it to the cliff side, so maybe some darker color coming in. And some additional texture into those rocks. So just moving on to a different dab here. Uh, let's go to... this one here called stratus clouds and let's see what kind of texture it adds it's a very soft brush you see that so it's going to be very uh, very oily in appearance but it might be just what you're looking for for a certain part of the painting where you're trying to bring in maybe a little more uh, of a fluid look to your clouds a softer look I go back to Just Juicy, I reset it, 
I can then again go to some of my other brushes, uh, my other brush dabs, and maybe I'll pick up this one here and look at see how it works with my cliffs for adding some additional texture and that's quite large. So every brush you're going to find is just an experiment and you're just going to have uh, more fun playing with these brushes and um, seeing where they take you. So we'll add some more color here, pull down, and again I like using the shift key to pull down color and then going back over it to blend and I do that pretty consistently in my painting. Where detail is needed, the brush always becomes smaller. The detail is added. And a lot of times I actually wait until the very end of the painting before adding my final details. Value is much more important to me at this point than anything. So I'm always working on getting that in and getting it exactly the way I want it. Let's see if I can find that. This was a nice one, the Impressionist brush for the, um, the look of the cypress trees. So you can see how you can spend lots of time working with captured dabs and all of your favorite brushes, from airbrushes, um, selecting a brush like pepper spray, for example, um, changing, re we'll reset it to default, and then change the dab. And you have a pepper spray that's going to give you something like this. You know, you still are getting that sprayed out option look of the brush, the way it comes out. Um, again, look at the opportunity here to create the look of cypress trees by just using an airbrush. So you have many opportunities uh, to work with these dabs. Um, I ended up, this was my finished painting and you can see that by the time I finished with it I had uh, added things like, uh, you know, rocks and minimized the trees a little bit, did a little more detail into those trees, added some birds and waves. So I just, I don't think I've ever been so excited about a new feature in Painter than working with captured dabs. Because again, remember that the brush dab is a precious part of working with Corel Painter and the Painter brushes and it becomes a very unique opportunity for you to develop and create brush dabs that speak the language you want to portray uh, to your audience as they look at your paintings. So I hope you'll enjoy this new feature in Painter, the Captured Dab Library, and creating some amazing brush dabs. I look forward to seeing your work too. All right, take care.